वेलकम टू ई शिक्षण लास्ट क्लास वी हैव सीन द एसेंशियल्स ऑफ फ्लोर प्लानिंग प्लेसमेंट एंड वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द टाइप ऑफ गोल्स और कंस्टेंट्स फॉर फ्लोर फ्लोर प्लानिंग एंड फॉर द प्लेसमेंट एंड व्हाट्स द डिफरेंस बिटवीन फ्लोर प्लानिंग एंड द प्लेसमेंट एंड वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द राउटिंग कंस्टेंट्स वाइल परफॉर्मिंग फ्लोर प्लानिंग एंड इवन वाइन परफॉर्मिंग प्लेसमेंट so today we'll be seeing uh, one of the placement uh, conditions where you know timing is uh, taken as a constraint when timing is a constraint like how to go for uh, placement and we'll even see one the one of the examples of uh, uh, placement where the when a uh, timing is a constraint what in what stages we have to go through so in today's discussion the first topic is timing driven placement so who gives you the time say so you are at a uh, placement stage where the physical dimension of a net is not yet discovered because the physical dimension of a net a physical dimension when i say it's a width of a net and the height of the net and whether it is a metal one type or a metal two type how many layers of metal everything is not yet freezed during uh, placement and it is only estimated so we have to go with the estimations only Uh, there is no actual data available at placement stage so when we have to estimate the net uh, you know interconnect delay or the wait one uh, one part is that we can take it from the net list but net list when we are taking it to a physical design stage there could be some variation with respect to uh, the delay so how do we calculate or how do we estimate so this uh, timing driven placement method can follow or uh, you know take advantage of many you know net weight finders so one of those is the zero slack algorithm where it try to identify what is the net weight and if any slack slack means what the difference if any difference in the uh, you know arrival time of the you know net arrival time in the sense in the any difference in the a uh, timing of a net is present we try to adjust during uh, you know uh, placements itself like how to do it let us see that so we have an example the part a of the example where you can see everywhere it's 0 bar 1 bar 1 0 bar 2 bar 3 this is written so this indicate the first part is the arrival time to the input of a gate next next is the required time actually when it has to arrive so it is arriving at this uh, say nanosecond of time but uh, when it has to actually arrive due to when i take a difference between these two i will get a number that is called as a slack there is a difference i have to make it a zero slack that means what i have to either add delay or i have to you know optimize the delay so that the slack is zero In this particular example we have given a uh, a uh, uh, room for only positive slacks if you see it there is no the minus 1 that is me, that means it is is not arriving late it always arrives early and i have uh, i have to make it i have to delay it so this algorithm come into rescue whenever such condition is given or obtained so now how to go with this say let me take this part arrival time is 1 say take it in a nanosecond time okay 1 nanosecond but actually required is what it has to arrive at 4 nanosecond so there is a difference of 3 nanosecond that becomes slack the same one if i look at in this it's the same position arrival time is 2.5 it is changing now and required is also 2.5 then the slack is immediately going to be zero you can check in any other part of the network say let me take this part arrival time is at 3 nanosecond but the required is 4 nanosecond i have to adjust the gate delay such a way that arriving time is 4 nanosecond and the required is also 4 nanosecond so that the slack is going to be zero so this uh, you know this has to be done for at every stage in the net list it's a tedious process and there will be a you know planners for uh, that it is automated one uh, 
uh, it is not like we go on adding gate delay ev at every stage. Hope this is clear. Another example of the uh, placement, so if you look at the placement say this is one placement where you know if you look at this particular part of the placement you have understood what is partition based placement, we have done min cut analysis. So, a placement area will be you know uh, partitioned into bins. So, if you look at this particular bin and min cut is very important, there are 4 interconnects being cut. If you look at this part of the bin, there will be at least 2 interconnects are being cut. So, when we are going for a min cut process or a partition based placement, we have to take care of that. Due to which what has happened is like some orientation we have to change, the result of or uh, the orientation change is this. Say adjacent to uh, say A, D was present here, now D is replaced by C just for the improvement in uh, for the improvement for the number of interconnects being cut. So, when I get to see this particular example, what is the outcome? The first cut if I look at, it has got a cut size of 4, that means four, again 4 interconnects being cut. If I look at this part of the uh, network, I, there is again, there is again under this particular cut line, there are 2 interconnects being cut, but in this particular area it was 2, but now it is reduced to 1. So, we will give this uh, permutations and combinations so that number of interconnects will be reduced. So, with respect to this, when we take it for the routing how it is going to appear. So, now I we have a cell A, this A block is represented as a cell A, then cell B, then we have cell C that is represented here and we have cell D that is represented here. So, between cell A and C we have one interconnect and between C and D we have one more interconnect. So, there are two interconnects actually crossing in this particular region. So, now as I told you before, when we are routing, we have to dedicate some metal line to the routing. I am looking at the horizontal channel, it is horizontal in nature. So, when you when we see a channel, there will be tracks. I told you or explained to you what is a track. Okay. So, there are the tracks and these tracks will be taking say metal one layer. Say if it is a metal 2 layer, metal 2 layer cannot be present in the horizontal track. Metal 2 layer we consider only for vertical channels. So, there is you know uh, there is a single layer routing, there are multiple layers of routing. In a single layer routing what we do this part is the metal 1 and this will be same thing will be extended to interconnect. If it is a multi layer uh, routing. So, metal 1 is taken only for horizontal track and to connect the pins, we take a, a different type of materials and metal 1 and that uh, uh, column will be connected through a wire that is again possible. So, I will be taking metal 1 for the horizontal track and metal 2 for the vertical columns present. So, now that routing is performed with respect to the placement. So, well, there is one connection, so one track I will be allotting for the connection between A and C and another track I will be allotting for the connection between C and D because they have an interconnect. So, I will be connecting through the same channel. This is how a routing can be completed post uh, placement stage. So, let us uh, learn it in deep like how exactly what are the stages it will go through when we have to uh, obtain an optimized uh, placement. As we know we start with the design entry. So, here in the design entry we started with the digital uh, design flow where uh, through hardware description language we have entered our design along with the specification. Once uh, uh, speci uh, it is functionally simulated and functionally it is clear then we go for a synthesis. In the synthesis, we obtain RTL netlist, register transfer level netlist. Netlist uh, looks like this, 
but what I have to note is here is the load capacitance. Every wire will have a fan out. Based on a fan out, we will uh, find out what is the load capacitance. So, so far it is only the load capacitance. We have not added any wire capacitance. When we reach to the uh, last stage of placement, wire capacitance should also be considered. So, but at this stage wire capacitances are unknown because metallization is not done yet. I have dedic uh, not dedicated any metal to any of the interconnects. Uh, once after routing only we will come to know what is the wire capacitance. So, load with respect to interconnect load capacitance that is depends on the fan out. We will perform the initial floor plan. Okay, floor planning is done. So, C1 was the initial capacitance. Now, it is C2. So, our idea is when the floor planning this load capacity uh, sorry this uh, initial capacitance with respect to fan out wire load we call it as a wire load. Okay, This wire load should come down. So, if you look at the plot here this was the initial capacitance that is reduced to this. Now, once after uh, floor planning is done, we have to once again synthesize. We believe that synthesis happens only once, uh, once you take uh, you know your functional representation into a, uh, you once you attach your functional representation into the library, then we do synthesis. We So far we believe that, but this is not the case. At every stage we have to synthesize the design. Now, once after floor plan, we will once again try to synthesize with the load constraint. So, this is the obtained one, but I still have a constraint. So, I will obtain once again the synthesized uh, netlist. I will perform now, if it is ok, it is reduced compared to C1, uh, C2 should be less. If it is reduced, then I will go for driving driven placement. Once the placement is done, I will obtain uh, the next load capacitance. So, that once again will be synthesized. This, this time synthesis will happen with the optimization of placement. Once after uh, placement, we will obtain one more load capacitance. So, that should be uh, you know uh, the C 3 is taken as a uh, input synthesizer and we will try to obtain one more load capacitance. This should be once again reduced form of C 3. So, this process will be continued, we call it as a back end notation like say if any stage, what happens if C 1 is less than C 2, what will happen? Your floor planning is not good. So, you have to back annotate and repeat everything. See that stage is not shown here, but every at every stage you have to back annotate if repeat. It is like even after routing also, see if you find ok it is not matching to the timing, then you rip, uh, we call it as a rip up and reroute. You just take out all the connection and reroute. This process is a continu uh, continued until uh, the, uh, the obtained result matches to the specifications. The same process is explained in the description. Once after placement is over, what is the next step? The next step is the routing. So, how to perform routing? There are stages because it is a so complicated network. Say, when while performing uh, say floor planning and placement, we fix the routing region, we try to get an estimate of how routing can be done. But when we actually come to the routing, that information may not be enough. So, we have to do certain, uh, you know we are not changing any uh, channel region or anything alteration. So, that you know the routing should not have any sort of congestion. So, there are two stages in the routing. One is the global routing. The second one is the detailed routing. Global routing is the one where you find a way to connect two interconnects. In what way, how best we can interconnect two terminals. But detailed routing is the one after knowing wh what is the way in which we have to connect through a global routing, we try to assign that particular net a track, a metal layer and we freeze the connection. So, when global routing we are identifying only the way we are not freezing the connection, we are not allotting any metal layer, we are not connecting any wire 
or we cannot even have an estimation how many metal layers. But when it is a detailed routing, we do all the sort of optimization with respect to the routing in the track. So, in the global routing, firstly we have to define region. The vague definition of a region is already done through placement process. We define a region that means, so you have a chip representation and there are two blocks. So, there is a pin here say pin number 1 and there is a pin here pin number 1. See in the global router if you look at these two pins can be connected in many ways. I can take one connection, I do connection something like this, another connection, possible connection in this way. So, there are multiple ways present to connect two pins. So, I have in the global routing phase, I have to identify like what is the best way in which I can connect these two. When I say the best way, definitely with respect to time. So, you might have heard of uh, you know shortest path algorithm uh, with respect to say computer network. Now, this, those types of uh, algorithms will be used to identify what is the best way to connect two pins. So, now once the path is identi uh, identified, now I have to define a region right. So, this horizontal tra track it is taking in this area, then not horizontal channel, then it is shifted to a vertical channel and this server I have to do the connection. This identification is the defined region that you have to define a channel region. Then the region assignment ok, channel is done, so uh, identification is done ok, I have to take to this uh, particular region, I have to travel this distance and I have to take to this particular line and have to take uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, distance. This has to be analyzed well in advance right. So, in global routing phase, we try to analyze like what is the way in which two pins can be connected. Now, what is the leftover? So, I have already identified and I have defined what is a path in which it is traveling and I have to assign a pin now, I have to interconnect a pin. So, now loose connection is formed, I have not exactly fixed one particular track and but I have defined it ok, this is a track in which I, I have to you know travel to interconnect uh, these two terminals. So, I will define, identify the routing region which channel where after that I will define ok this is a path to be uh, path is identified and this is the path after the path I will identify this is how I have to interconnect the pins of that particular path. So, this will happen in the global routing phase, but when it is a detailed routing phase I have many other constraints. Say if I look at this particular part of the channel this is appears to be as a horizontal channel. If I look at this particular path, then it is a vertical channel. But what about the junction? Because I have told you like for, for horizontal channel, we will be using metal 1, for vertical channel, we will be using metal 2. When metal type 1 is different and the metal 2 is different, see their dimensions are different. When metal 2 means what? Uh, metal 1 is close to the you know the logic circuit and metal 2 is far away. So, distance wise also it is a different one. So, there is complete isolation between metal 1 and metal 2. But what will happen at this particular junction? This junction is called as switch box. It is not called as a channel. Say whenever a connection to be done, so you will track to the horizontal track, then there are vertical tracks running. You have to identify one particular vertical track and you have to connect that metal 1 layer to metal 2 layer using a contact called via. So, at the junction, it is like a traffic uh, lights uh, junction, okay? it is a traffic signal junction. At the junction, it is very complicated, many uh, lines are coming horizontally and many lines are coming vertically and wh where to connect what? That should be identified. So, that will be done at the switch box. So, when it is a detailed routing, it is not just a path, I am allotting the metal layer. So, I will have two parts, one is the channel routing, I will look at only at the channel region, horizontal region and vertical region, that is enough for me. But when I shift to the junction, then 
it is a switch box. See, if it is covered by two sides, then it is a 2D switch box. But if it is covered by all four sides, then it is a 3D switch box. Like all four means, uh, say you have a chip, there are four blocks, horizontal channel, vertical channel, once again here the horizontal channel, vertical channel. Now, now this particular switch box is covered by all the directions, so then it is called as a 3D switch box, but in the previous example only in the 3 direction it is covered, so it is say 2D switch box. So, now channel routing will be taken separately, then the switch box routing is also taken uh, separately and you have to once again run the timing analysis, everything is mandatory even in the global. Uh, uh, the after timing analysis and all the nets are routed, then only you can freeze. If any timing well, uh, you know violation, say this is what I was mentioning, the black uh, back annotation, I have to repeat either the detail routing. Once again, say I will uh, get a fa false result, detail routing is not passed. Then I have to repeat the entire process starting from the global routing, because your global planner is not good enough to obtain optimized solutions so only uh, the result is failing in the detail routing. So, every stage you have to back annotate and repeat and come to the final stage where you know you can through your design for the routing. How to represent global routing and the detail routing? I was uh, telling you global routing just identifies a path. So, we call it as a loose connection, like I know this is how I have to connect. But the same connection if I take to a de uh, detail routing, the same connection. So, I will take a co vertical column, run through a horizontal track, I will be using metal one, then I will take to the vertical, uh, uh, you know, call, uh, vertical track. That means, I will have a wire here present and a wire here present. So, I will be taking it to a metal 2 layer. Then once again, I am running it in a horizontal column. See, in a vertical track, it, there is a horizontal column and once again, I will take it to another vertical track. So, the horizontal column present connecting two vertical track or in a vertical channel or a vertical column present connecting two horizontal tracks in a horizontal channel is called as a dog leg. It is called as a dog leg. See all these optimization we do like introduction of dog leg all these we do to reduce the number of tracks being used in a particular channel re region. Okay. All the, these will be performed and the routing is done. So, this path if you take the routing is done, but here we the channel density appears to be little relaxed. So, we have a vertical co horizontal column, vertical track, then the horizontal column again, sorry, it is a horizontal track, then the vertical column. So, that means vertical col uh, vertical uh, track to a horizontal track attachment happens only once. So, you have a wire, but we will not have dog leg in this particular region. But in the previous region, we even had a, a dog leg. So, now coming to the global routing, uh, in the global routing, how to identify a path? That means, I have to connect uh, two terminals. Let me take this uh, as an example. I have a source terminal, I have a target terminal. So, these two points to be routed. Okay. So, I have a grid structure. So, this grid is the representation of this notation like how, where the blocks are placed and grid will give you the identification where exactly the pin. So, this particular pin is present in the, this grid. So, it is easy to identify. So, to just to you know simplify the process. See, one thing we have to understand here is like uh, this is an automated process the program program won't understand okay this is for vlsi design okay i have to take a transistor here for program it is a node communicating node so we uh, derive the entire communication information in the chip 
communication information means the network of interconnects in the chip in terms of graph. So, these graphs are we call as a grid graph. So, grid graph means the it will give you the information about exact location of a pin and exact location of a block. So, there is a block present here, how do we represent that in a you know a graph. Whenever there is a block present, we represent that particular node as a field node, it is a darkened. This uh, identification ok, in this area there is a block placement, I have to I should not use this particular area for routing. When it is empty, when it is open, that means what this area is left for the routing itself, so I can take that. So, with respect to that, this type of grid modeling is done for a chip and you identify two pins to be interconnected. So, definitely one becomes a source pin, another one becomes a target pin. So, I have to identify how to connect these two. The best way to connect is definitely a shortest path. So, I have to identify what is the shortest path. So, there are many algorithms to identify the shortest path. One, one category of the algorithm is maze routing algorithm. It is called as a maze routing, maze routing algorithm. So, I will be briefing you one of the uh, maze routing algorithms called Lisa router. Okay, Lee is the person who developed that algorithm. So, the algorithm itself is named as Lee. So, it is a Lee's routing algorithm, how it happens. So, now, so to the, our common sense when we look at it, okay, this is one path, I, I think I can connect it in this way also, what is there? I can connect it in this way also, what is there? So, this is the basic idea, right? So, I can connect in, in many uh, ways. So, when I start from the source, I can travel in all four directions. This is a first stage of travel. From all these four points, I can find out the neighbor in another four directions. So, four directions to this, one is already source, so I cannot get back. So, this is the uh, neighbor, this is a neighbor and this is the neighbor, yes. When I reach to a stage here, I can once again identify, meantime from here also I can start. Okay, neighbor here, neighbor here, for this terminal, this is a neighbor, from this terminal, this is a neighbor. When I come to here, I can even travel in this direction, but I identify that there is a block present here. Block in the sense is not the block, it is a block placement, logic cell placement is present here. So, I cannot utilize this particular part for the routing. This is how we travel. So, we travel from all four directions. So, we call such search method. It is a search method basically, like I am searching for target starting from source is called as a BFS search. BFS search means breadth first search, breadth first search. It is a search method, there are many types of search methods. So, there is another search method called DFS that is depth first search. Okay. So, this is how we have to search. So, how to decode this uh, you know idea in terms of uh, an algorithm. So, I have given you one algorithm. So, let us start. When we start with the uh, routing, so we know where is a block, how many blocks and where is a, a positioning of a block. Okay. We identify number of blocks and I know from which pins to be connected. So, I know where is the starting points, where is the source point and where I should end the path search. Now, what is the outcome? By the end of the algorithm, I want the path to be identified, correct? So, for this, I will make two lists. One is the P list, parent list, another is a neighbor list, N list. Because I start from one point and I reach out to its neighbors in all four directions. So, all four directions um, the nodes of all four directions will become a neighbor and from those neighbor I will be starting the new search again. So, it is like parallelly all the search will be running and temp is equal to 1 that is I believe that in the grid graph the distance from one node to another is one unit. So, I am equating the temp to 1. So, it is actually the weight. See algorithm is you know simplified version of algorithm, uh, it is just to uh, you know 
realize like how it is operating ok. So, when I say it is distance is 1, we try to have a grid with the equal size ok, height is same and the weight uh, width is same. That time I can equate m to 1 because it is the same unit size cell type. You can have other weights as well, that time the temp value should be changed accordingly. For the horizontal line temp value is different, for the vertical line temp value is different that you have to take care, you have to modify the algorithm in that case. So, we have simplified the algorithm, we are assumed have assumed that the temp value is 1 that, the, that means it is a unit size cell. So, path exists anyways, there is no path yet, while p list is equal to null that means what? Already I have some element in the P list, at least source terminal is present, ok. I have to start from the source. For each vertex VI in the P list, so everybody present in the P list, as of now I have only source, ok. For each vertex VJ neighboring to VI, that means VI is present in the vertex I is present in the parent list, but vertex J is present in the neighboring list. If it is blocked, there is so, if it is unblocked, there is no blockage present, that particular vertex if it is not blocked, in the next in the example I have shown this, say, say I am at this particular position, I am finding its neighbor to be this, but this neighbor is blocked, I cannot consider, if a neighbor is unblocked then only I can con, uh, consider such neighbor. So, that this is what we are checking, if it is unblocked, so I will end my path search at Vj. Ok, I equate, ok, I have searched till that particular point. So, the interconnect weight is incremented by 1. Insert that particular VJ to N list. Now, this becomes a N list. So, I have identified its neighbor, but it need not be the target, but there is a neighbor that uh, particular neighbor is taking me towards the target. So, that is uh, you know taken in the list as is a neighbor. So, I have to identify now whether that neighbor is a target that could be a possibility right you begin a start and immediate next neighbor is the target ok is, uh, is the target if uh, it is a target then path exists is true and you can uh, you know retrace like how you reach to the neighbor if not. So, one way of search is over one level of search is over temp is incremented by 1 because distance from one point to another is one unit, one point, second point is a two unit, one plus one, right. So, I have to increment, I increment that and I will repeat the entire, you know, process once again. This is how, this is one of the examples, this is how many more algorithms are there to identify how best way we can connect two points. So, this is, uh, hap this happens only in the global routing phase. So, that is the uh, end of your uh, uh, syllabus and uh, you have till uh, uh, global routing and the back annotation happens in every stage. So, for, sub, uh, for back annotation separately I have not made any slide, but back annotation at every stage if it is not matching to the specification, we have to repeat the entire process it is called, which is called as a back annotation and uh, thank you for uh, your patience hearing. I hope uh, this lecture videos are helpful for your uh, understanding. Thank you so much.